the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of all ages. Amen. <clears throat> Today is the second Sunday of the Great Lent, or the Sunday of Temptation. And as we've said before, usually the, the Orthodox Church um, puts this gospel in the beginning of, of the Lent <clears throat> to remind us of what is to come. And just as a reminder also, the seven or eight Sundays of the Great Lent um, are kind of grouped into different categories with, with different sub-things, um, leading us finally to, to the power and the glory of the Holy Resurrection. Um, but after the Church helps establish the foundation, then we go through the, the, the repentance and healing that we receive, um, the healing we receive from God after the repentance that we offer to Him. Um, <clears throat> but in the beginning, the Church kind of uh, prepares for us the building blocks of um, our spiritual struggle that, that we experience um, in our road to the Lord and with God. Um, <clears throat> and so after speaking about the treasures of the kingdom, our final uh, goal and destination from last week, the church says, you're going to be tempted. Um, and, <clears throat> and not that temptations may come, but temptation will come. Um, and as... Um, one Western uh, saint, uh, Hilary of uh, Poitiers, says, um, the temptations of the devil assault those principally who are sanctified. So when the Lord went, as, as St. Matthew describes in the gospel of today, um, when in the life of Christ was he tempted? When in his ministry was he tempted? Immediately after, The, the baptism, right? Uh, after being baptized um, and uh, the, the revelation of the Holy Trinity, right? And the great blessing of the sacrament, uh, the Spirit led him into, into the wilderness to be tempted. Sometimes, often, when we are tempted, we say, why is God doing this? Um, uh, what did I do wrong, right? Um, <clears throat> but as St. Hilary says, um, he, he desires above all to overcome the holy. Thus also it is written, my son, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. So after the Lord, after the Lord was baptized, he was led by the Spirit in, into the wilderness to be tempted. It's not necessarily because we are weak that we are tempted, but the enemy fights strongest with his, those opponents whom he feels to, to be the strongest. So when he realizes that the fasting has the opportunity to make us strong, he's going to fight. Um, and for those who are not struggling spiritually, he doesn't have to fight them. Um, uh, so <clears throat> um, that's just something to keep in mind when we plan to grow with God. Uh, the other thing is we don't forget who we are. We don't forget who God is. Um, as uh, St. Paul says to the Hebrews, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in, was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And we'll get more into the detail of, of what the temptation and the sin looks like, because sometimes we have some confusion as to how these things arise in, in our minds and our hearts. And as St. Augustine says, Christ allowed himself to be tempted that he might be our mediator, in overcoming temptation, right? So because he was tempted on all points, when we are tempted, we beseech him who was victorious in his temptation. As he, as St. Augustine continues, not only by helping us, but also by giving us the example um, of how to overcome. <clears throat> uh, and as also we probably said before, in, in the gospel of today, how many different types of temptation do we see? Three, right? Um, which were they? Okay, before we get to that, I'll just refer to St. John Cassian, who kind of uh, describes, uh, I think last year or two years ago, we described the different types of vices or sins or temptations. Um, <clears throat> that he lays out to us in his conferences. Um, but 
there's about eight, and then we narrow them down to these three categories, right? He says, the one who possessed the incorruptible image and likeness of God, Christ, had to be tempted himself by the same passions by which Adam was also tempted, and Eve, of course, and all of us, when he still enjoyed the inviolate image of God, that is, by gluttony, vainglory, and pride, right? And we'll see this in a second. He says, by these three vices, then, we read that the Lord, the Savior, who was also tempted, having been attacked by these very same temptations. He also taught us by his own example how we should conquer the tongue, <clears throat> right? So, and in another place, St. John, the, the evangelist, in his epistle, he says, these include the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right? Um, or in another way, we can say that the first one was of gluttony because he told the, the serpent, the, told Eve, right, to eat of the tree, right? Um, and he also told the Lord Christ to, to change the stones to become bread, right? So this is the lust of the flesh, right? And then the lust of the, the eyes have to do with um, the vain glory, right? When he takes them up um, on, on the pinnacle of the temple or sorry, on, on a high mountain, saying, cast yourself down, right? <clears throat> um, and then the serpent also told Eve what? When you eat, your eyes will be, you're, you're not seeing properly. God is hiding um, something from you. Um, and then the last one is the pride of life. It says you will be like the son of God or you'll be, be like God, sorry, if you partake, right? And then uh, with Christ, he showed him all the kingdoms and said, all of these I will give you if you fall down in worship, right? <clears throat> so these are just three different categories that we keep in mind when we are tempted. It's not just necessarily one specific sin, but um, uh, the devil has many different tactics. And so when we start to study the, the playbook of the enemy, it becomes a lot easier to overcome, right? <clears throat> and so um, St. James in his epistle, I, I prefer always to go to the, this epistle just for a few verses, which um, elucidate the, 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 the different ways that... Um, sin develops okay um and so i uh, heard a, a sermon many years ago about dividing these two or three verses into three different kind of equations um we'll do a little bit of math of, of how temptation is formed and then how sin is formed and how death becomes a result okay so those are the three different um equations okay so <clears throat> the first one uh, St. James says, each one is tempted. So he says temptation equals what? Um, when a person is drawn away by their own desires and then enticed. We'll, we'll talk about these uh, three categories, right? <clears throat> so he says, how is temptation formed? Temptation is formed because we have certain things inside of us, which we'll call desires. And then once we have an opportunity to satisfy these desires, of course, in the wrong way, then we, it becomes, uh, we can say that we have been tempted, right? So oftentimes, as human beings, we have desire inside of us. And desire is not necessarily wrong. We have good desires, and we have not so good desires. Or how do we fulfill these desires, and in what capacity, and in what time, and in what way? That is what distinguishes it, if it, if it is a sin or not, right? <clears throat> um, but, and then if I have no opportunity to act upon a desire, then I can't say I've been tempted because, let's say, I'm really hungry right now, but there's no food. Okay, so I'm not tempted to eat because there's nothing to eat, right? Um, <clears throat> right? So um, also we know that it is um, because we have desires, right? Um, it also depends on the time when we fulfill them, right? So to eat now, at this second, would be a big problem, right? Because we have to take the communion. To eat in two hours is not as big a problem, right? Um, to eat a hamburger today is wrong, right? To eat a hamburger in 40 days is not, right? Um, so again, the devil often tempts us with a good thing, but at the wrong time, right? So he'll tell you know, a youth, oh, you, you should start dating this person, um, but it's too early, right? <laughs> I, I'm not going to get married for another 20 years. 
oh, don't worry, it, it's, it's a good thing, this is a very good person, it's not the right time, right? Um, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, um, and even if you look at the story of Adam and Eve, right, eating from the tree of life was not a bad thing, but once they partook first of the knowledge of evil, of the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then God said, I, I can't let them eat from the tree of life at this point. But then you fast forward to Revelation, and what, what do we see in, in the book of Revelation that God is willing to give to all of us when we enter the tree of life, right? So it's a timing. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't wrong for, for Christ to eat bread, but when he fasted th those days, um, he even broke bread with his disciples, right? And the Last Supper, there's nothing wrong with that act, but it was all about the timing. Um, <clears throat> so this is how the, the devil uh, is cunning. Sometimes we can overcome a temptation by saying, okay, what I'm being tempted with is not necessarily wrong, but the timing is wrong. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting a, a little bit ahead of myself. So so the, the next category, so that's how uh, temptation is formed. Do you remember the two things? That form temptation is the desire and the opportunity. Okay, um, so then what about sin? Can I be tempted but not sin? Yes, because um, the verse in Hebrews that we just mentioned earlier, Christ was tempted in everything, but he didn't sin. Christ is without sin, right? So it's possible to be tempted, but to overcome temptation and not to sin, <clears throat> right? Um, so just because we're tempted, it doesn't make it wrong. Um, what makes it wrong is what? When we're tempted, we do and we act upon that temptation, right? <clears throat> and uh, so here, St. James continues in verse 15 by saying, when desire has conceived, um, it gives birth to sin, okay? So when you act upon the desire and you have the opportunity to act, then it becomes um, sin. And just as a side note, um, oftentimes when we say the word sin, we usually mean the act, but it means a lot more than that, okay? And we'll, we'll get to that a whole other time, um, because uh, sin is also a state that, that we're in, um, or we, we can be in. And, and so, um, get to that another time. So the second equation here we can say is that sin equals what? being tempted or the temptation plus acting upon okay um <clears throat> and uh this is kind of the way we uh differentiate between um being tempted and then sinning okay uh the last one has to do with um the wages of sin as as the scripture says the wages of sin is death right and saint james says um once this he uses the example of conception and a baby right and he says once this this baby of sin forms after what after the action right and says when this this sin begins to grow and grow and grow and he says when it's full grown it brings forth death um and what is the full grown sin we can say the full grown sin is the sin that lacks repentance Okay, so the last equation we'll use is that death is equal to sin plus no or, or minus repentance or plus no repentance, right? <clears throat> so there's both physical death and eternal death. Here we talking, we're talking about the eternal death and the spiritual death. Um, and so uh, to kind of put all this together, why are we going through this? Because we can't figure out how to overcome temptation and to overcome sin until, until we understand the process, right? So we have all these things that are contributing to, to or leading to, to death. And this is what the devil wants for all of us because he is in this category, right? Um, so this actually shows that there's many opportunities that God gives us to be victorious. And if we fail in one of these steps, we have two or three other opportunities to succeed. And then we break the cycle, okay? Um, <clears throat> so... Um, how can we have victory? We know that we know that this is basically his playbook, right, of the devil. Um, and as long as we try to put safeguards in each of these areas where we can fall, 
So if we fall into one trap, hopefully we won't fall into the second. And if we fall into the second, hopefully we won't fall into the third. Right? So this is kind of the, the plan. <clears throat> so we'll kind of do the opposite of the equation, right? So we'll make things uh, negative, right? Or put absolute value sign so that um, it doesn't lead to, to so we, we change the outcome, right? <clears throat> so if desire plus opportunity equals temptation, then first thing I could do is sanctify the, the desire. This is actually the hardest thing to do. But if God gives us the grace to sanctify the temptation, then there's no other formula. Like, you've broken the cycle, right? This is the ideal. This is what happened, you know, with Christ. He had the pure desire. Um, and But we'll see, he was still tempted. Why? Because the devil brought in an opportunity. Um, but, of course, he didn't act upon it, <clears throat> right? So, um, again, the desire is not necessarily sin um, because Christ had the desire to eat, but he didn't sin, right? And he was tempted. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get to the opportunity part again in, in a second. So, if our, like we said, if our sin desires are sanctified and holy, even if there's an opportunity to sin, we won't be tempted. We won't feel the temptation, <clears throat> right? And the spiritual exercises that the church gives us are used to, um, to, to, as, as an offering to the Lord to request the sanctification. The sanctification comes by the Holy Spirit, like we say in the liturgy. Uh, it comes from God, right? But we attempt to live this life of holiness, and we ask God to give us this life of holiness, right? Um, and he, how, do, how is sanctification happen? It happens through the blood of Christ, as the Hebrews explains, right? He sanctified the people with his own blood, right? Um, and there is no remission of sin except with with, uh, un, uh, except with with the shedding of blood, right? And the only blood that sanctifies is the blood of Christ. Even though in the Old Testament the concept was was initiated by showing all of the sacrifices that uh, of the animals that were killed in the shedding of blood to point us to the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Um, <clears throat> not that there was any salvation in in any of those things. Okay, so. Again, the spiritual exercises that the church gives us is to help us um, to sanctify the desires and also to submit to the commandment, to submit to the, to the power that we have through Scripture and through the Holy Spirit, right? <clears throat> As the Lord said, you are already clean because of or by the word um, which I have spoken to you. So the, so the, the, the cleansing happens and the sanctification happens through the truth, and we find the truth through Scripture. And so the more we read Scripture, the more we have opportunity to be sanctified, right? And then we have, if we have sanctified desires, then there's no temptation, okay? So this is the ultimate goal, but we know nine times out of ten, or we're more likely not to have this in place um, in the beginning of our um, spiritual struggle. And even uh, sometimes at the end. Why? Because we're still human. We still have the flesh. Um, and so the lust of the flesh fights against the lust of the spirit, or the desire of the spirit, as St. Paul says. <clears throat> so, um, again, St. John of the Ladder of Damascus says, control your appetites before they control you. This is why we pass, right? The fallen Amen. Lucifer, Satan, is prince of the, the demons, of and gluttony is prince of the passions. Um, so fasting and lust, it roots out the bad thoughts. It makes for purity of prayer, an enlightened soul, a watchful mind, a deliverance from blindness. Okay, um, So um, here, in a sense, we can say that sometimes Came we to submit him, to temptation said, if you are because the God, we fail to submit to God. And, and, and the commandments that are in Scripture, and when he had right? Fasted 40 um, days and 40 and nights when we submit to God, the devil will flee now from us. Um, when we flee from God, uh, we submit to evil, to the devil. Um, and so, when what was the response um, of, of the Lord when the devil said, just change the stones to bread? Or what was, all of the responses came from where? Scripture, right? Why? <laughs> to show us, read your Bible, uh, follow the scripture, um, use it 
as the sword of the spirit to fight against temptation. So the more I'm familiar I'm with my, my, I am with the word of God, the more power I have to overcome um, the thoughts that don't come from God um, or the thoughts that, that are tempting to, to act upon a sin. So if the scripture says don't do it, and I know that, then it will encourage me um, or I, and to, to sanctify the desires or at least not to act upon the temptation when I had. <clears throat> um, okay, so the second thing is, okay, let's say the, the desires are not sanctified yet, right? Well, I still won't be tempted unless I want have an opportunity, okay? So we as simply limit or escape whatever opportunities that we have. Again, a lot of these things might be easier said than done, but at least we have our playbook, right? And we try, right? <clears throat> so the Lord said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation, right? And the book of Genesis, um, when, it, when it comes to Lot, the righteous, right? He says, run for your life, right? Flee for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Flee to the hills lest you be consumed, right? So oftentimes... The Lord does not expect us to stand up and fight in temptation, but sometimes it's easier just to run away from the temptation, like the righteous Joseph did in the book of Genesis, right? <clears throat> um, so when I know I'm going to be tempted in a specific area, if I could just simply take away any opportunity of, of, of mine to act upon that temptation, then um, again, problem will be solved, right? So where was Christ found uh, when he was tempted? He was in the wilderness, right? Was there any bread there? No. He intentionally went to a place where there was no bread. Like He, didn't, he wasn't in the bakery, right? He was in, in the desert, right? That's why the devil had, he couldn't tempt him with, with food. He tempted him with the idea of, of you abusing his power to change rocks into into bread, right? This is a higher level, right? For us, we're in the bakery, right? <laughs> um, we have we have plenty of opportunity all around us, um, but when you come to 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 grow um, in in the spiritual life and um, to to resist temptation, then you have to start removing the opportunities, um, and it's not it's easier said than done, right? Um, it's like cleaning out the pantry, right? Or removing any opportunity that you have. Um, <clears throat> and so he, notice the other three, uh, sorry, the other two uh, temptations. What did the devil have to do in order to tempt him? Like the second, so the first location was in the wilderness. He just said, change what's around you. He didn't, right? Then he brought them to a different place, right? One was in the temple. The other one was to high, high mountain, right? So the devil had to remove him from his location because the Lord chose the location where there was no opportunity. So, so that's what we're trying to say. What do you have to do in your environment to remove the opportunity for you to sin or to be tempted? Um, and each one has their own uh, bag of uh, temptations or their own specific weaknesses when it comes to sins. So um, if there's... if if it's meat, you know, don't work at McDonald's, right? If, it, if it's alcohol, take it out of the house, right? If it's um, uh, sin re relating to, you know, your phone, take remove the device uh, from you, or at least remove the, the, the opportunity that, that you might have. Even if you don't feel tempted at that moment, when you do, because we always... Uh, temptation sometimes creeps upon us when we're, when we're least expect it, then take measures in general to limit your opportunities, <clears throat> right? Then we won't even be tempted um, but by this plan, right? Okay, um, the last thing is, okay, let's say we are tempted, but we don't want to act, okay? So we need the ability not to act, right? And again, this one comes from God, right? This one comes from the virtue of self-control. Right, um, and so uh, this is a fruit of the spirit, and it, and and um, uh, 
this the the Bible speaks on and on about the, the importance of developing uh, this self control, but how? Um, that that is always the uh, caveat or the, the the difficult part, right? As um, Saint Paul says, God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear, but a spirit of power and love and self control. So it comes from God. Um, and so when we devote ourselves to fasting and prayer, like like uh, Saint Paul says, again, this is um, the spiritual exercise that we offer to God. Ask, in, and in return, we ask for the grace of, of uh, self-control, of sanctification of the desires, right? Um, <clears throat> and so this constant act of submitting to God helps us um, in, it's not like, you know, exchange for one thing or another. If I do one, two, three, then God will give me four, five, six. Th that's, that's not what we're talking about, but it's, it's the lifestyle and it's the posture that we have before God. If, we, if we're submitting our whole life to him, um, then God is going to give us the power to resist, right? Um, because, again, we can't serve God and mammon, right? If, if, if we're serving God then um, wholeheartedly, then any intrusive thought or temptation to go against God will be rejected. Um, <clears throat> and so the church trains us on a daily basis to grow in this posture um, towards him. <clears throat> okay, And that's why fasting is so important in our church. Um, um, so we can have the victory through the self-control and sanctification. Okay, um, Sorry, I know it took uh, a long time. So the last, the last um, uh, area that we have for protection is probably the easiest. And I think maybe we start here um, first, right? Because... It's not if we sin, it's when we sin, because there's no one lives a, a day without sinning, as, as um, the, the church teaches us. And, and so um, the next two weeks, God willing, and the church has arranged for us to focus on the concept of repentance, right? So, but as a, a token of hope, right, if, if my desires are not sanctified totally yet, and if I can't escape every opportunity, right, and I still lack the virtue of self-control, then I repent, right? And the church constantly opens her doors for me to repent, right? And again, as we'll see in the next couple of weeks, there's, there's, we have to distinguish between repentance and confession, right? Both are important, but um, uh, we need to have both, right? And <clears throat> don't let your sin be fully grown, um, because of the lack of repentance, right? We have to, um, uh, as, as the Psalms teach us, to um, crush the little ones with the rock, right? So here's not talking about killing babies. It's talking about um, eliminating the small sins, right? Um, so that they don't, they're not giving an opportunity to grow and grow and grow. Um, <clears throat> so sit with yourself often, Review your progress or lack thereof. Be honest um, with yourself. Remind yourself, not just... So, again, when we're talking about timing, oftentimes the devil wants to remind us of our strength before the sin and remind us of our weakness after, right? But God teaches us to do the opposite. We remind ourselves of our weakness before the sin, right? And then the strength that God offers to us after, okay? Um, so he, the devil tries to confuse us by reminding us of the, the, a certain thing, which not, might not necessarily be wrong, but he'll remind, it, he remind us of it at the wrong time, right? Um, as we often say, like the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing, right? Um, <clears throat> so like taking medicine when you're not sick is not good for you, even though medicine is good, right? Not taking medicine when you're sick, of course, that's not good either, right? <clears throat> so um, uh, one of the Desert Fathers uses this example, like this is the way to be strong. When your temptations start to speak in your mind, don't answer them, but get up, pray, repent, or do penance, and say, my Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, sin. Right? The, the Jesus prayer. Um, and so the church constantly, especially in this time, is, is focusing 
make sure you give a chance an opportunity and, and uh, time to sit with yourself and to repent. Um, and then you go confess. Right? <clears throat> uh, again, both are important. So, uh, to conclude, um, at the end, God was victorious, and God offers us the victory over temptation, but we need to go through one and probably all of these steps. right? Um, and because he was victorious, he, he gives us the victory. Right? As St. Gregory the Theologian says, it was not unworthy of our Redeemer to wish to be tempted who came also to be slain in order that by his temptations he may conquer our temptations. Right? Just as by his death he overcame our death. May the Lord give us victory um, through temptation so that we experience and taste the blessings of the Holy Resurrection. And glory be to him now and from the age of